The Lenovo Legion Go is one of the newer handheld PCs on the market, and naturally there's a lot of curiosity about it given its unique features. In this video, we're gonna talk about what it is, what's good about it, what's not so good about it, and who it's best suited for to help you determine whether or not it's worth it for you. So what is the Lenovo Legion Go? This is Lenovo's first handheld PC device, and it's one of the newest on the market right now. It launched on November 1st, 2023 here in the United States. It runs the Windows 11 operating system, but it also has its own proprietary software called Legion Space, which acts as a game launcher, but more on that later. The Legion Go comes with two storage options. The first is a 512 gigabyte that retails for $699, and then you have your one terabyte option at $799, plus applicable tax. Now, let's talk about some of the good to know things about the Legion Go. The first one is that it has detachable controllers, similar to the Nintendo Switch, which is great for those of you who like to play your games in tabletop mode. The second good to know thing about this is that it comes with a new feature called FPS mode, which stands for first person shooter. And this essentially allows you to turn your right controller into a mouse. So this is perfect for obviously playing first person shooter games, or in my case, playing the Sims in its natural habitat. The third good to know thing here is that it does require a bit of setup, even though it comes with Legion space. So there are gonna be some things that you're gonna have to do to get it set up the way you want. So installing your games, it's not gonna be something like a Switch where you literally just pick it up and play right away. The fourth good to know thing about the Go is that it does have upgradable internal storage and a micro SD card slot. So you could save yourself a little bit of money and buy a 512 gigabyte and then just upgrade that storage to one or two terabytes. The fifth and final good thing to know about the Legion Go is that you can use whatever wired or Bluetooth headphones you like. By the way, hi, I'm Jay, a casual gamer and brand manager in gaming. And on this channel, I mostly focus on all things cozy casual gaming, as well as providing non-technical coverage on gaming tech and handhelds. For those who just want to know what's cool about an item to determine whether or not it's worth their time and money. Let's talk about a couple of things that I think are really cool about the Legion Go. The first thing we're going to start off with is the screen, because let's be real, it matters. So the Legion Go comes with a 8.8 quad HD screen and I love it for two reasons one it's a big screen so naturally I love that but I think the thing that I like the most about it is how rich and vibrant the colors are on the screen it just feels like my games are legitimately coming to life and it just feels very immersive to me and I also have a rogue alley and the colors there look washed out in comparison to the Legion Go this is not a comparison video but I'm just like just trying to drive the point home of like how good it looks on screen, even with making additional tweaks to the alley to kind of brighten up the colors. It's just unmatched. It's such a joy to play games on it. The second cool thing about it is it runs on Windows 11 and that Windows operating system really opens up the capabilities of what you can do in terms of gameplay. So I can play not only my Steam games, but I can play my games on Epic, get my PlayStation Plus games through the PS Plus app and Xbox Game Pass games all in one and it is marvelous. So it literally just brings all of my games to one place. This is the thing that like I love about it and what I wanted from the Steam Deck. So the third cool thing I like about it is the customization options. Because it is a Windows PC, that allows you to be able to be super flexible in how you want it to look. So you can use your own wallpapers, your own backgrounds, and really just kind of create your own perfect little vibe, which I can really appreciate. So the fourth cool thing I think is the detachable controllers. Now, while I'm not much of a tabletop player myself, I usually just play it in handheld mode. I appreciate having the option and I just think it's cool because I haven't really seen it since the Switch. My fifth and second most favorite thing about the Go, FPS mode. Now, as I mentioned earlier, FPS mode allows you to take that right 
controller and basically turn it into a mouse. So this is great for first person shooter games for those of you that play them. I actually play zero first person shooter games, but we won't talk about that. I'm personally excited about it because it allows me to play games that are normally keyboard and mouse like The Sims. Honestly, I've never enjoyed playing The Sims with any controller. So to be able to play it in the way that it's meant to be played easily is chef's kiss. So as always, I'm gonna keep it honest with you. I told you the things that I think are cool, Let's talk about some of the things that I don't think are cool. So my first downside is the fact that there is no OLED screen. Now, while I did sing the screen's praises earlier and all of that is still true, I feel like considering that I spent almost $900, we should have an OLED screen at that price point. Like, you just should. So the second downside to the Legion Go is Legion Space. Now, I mentioned this earlier as a good to know, Legion Space is their proprietary software built into the Go that acts as a game launcher, but I will be real with you, it's Hot Mess Express. They have done a lot of updates since the first launch. Sorry, Lenovo. They have done a lot of updates since it first launched and it is progressively getting better, but there is a long way to go. And honestly, like I think that it's not something that I would actually use until it gets to a much better place. It's a software issue, right? Like it's something that can be fixed and the good news is they're working on it and their community team has been really like transparent about the things that they're fixing and what they're working on. So that's always good to see from bigger companies. The third downside of the Legion Go is the sound quality. So the speaker placement is a little weird. The speakers are placed like on top versus like its competitor, the Rogue Alley, where the speakers are right on the front of the device. So you're holding it and the sound is coming right at you, making it naturally sound like louder and crisper and clearer. It feels like the sound is kind of far away. It's not a deal breaker and there are things that you can do to like internally tweak the EQ and like make the sound better. But I just feel like for $900 almost, like we, probably should have figured that out. The fourth downside of the Go is that it is huge. I complained about the Steam Deck being a large device and this is larger than the Steam Deck. Now, while it's not entirely uncomfortable to hold, I feel like it does take a little bit of getting used to because of the way that the controllers are kind of like, the way they're on like a rounded but pointy edge, it, you kind of have to adjust your hands. I actually took it with me once on some travel and I would never do that again. It just eats up way too much space in my bag and I just, I can't. So I'd probably take along a smaller device like my Rogue Alley for traveling. And the fifth and final downside I'd say for the Go is the battery life. It is just not stellar, especially if you're playing on high performance settings. I play a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 personally, and I basically always have to be plugged in. Now in fairness, if you're playing a lot of indie games or less demanding games, you could probably get away with playing on like balanced or quiet mode, but I even still tend to play my indie games in high performance mode just because I want them to look and run as great as they can, but it's guaranteed that I'm gonna have to have that thing plugged in or else I'm gonna be getting a low battery alert. Okay, so let's talk about who the Lenovo Legion Go is going to be a good fit for. I think there are four main groups that would really get a lot of value out of it. The first group I like to call handheld PC seekers. These people don't own a gaming PC, but want a true handheld PC experience. The second group I like to call travel PC gamers. Now these are people that already have a primary gaming PC at home, but they want a version of it that they can take with them on the go. The third group I like to call handheld PC builders. These are people that love to mod and tinker and upgrade their device to turn it into exactly what they want. The fourth group I like to call productivity gamers. Now these are people that may or may not have a gaming PC at home, but they want a smaller device that they can use for both being productive at work or school, as well as gaming. This device has surpassed my expectations, and while it isn't perfect and there is a lot more work to be done, it is perfect for my particular gaming needs right now. And I think that if you fit into any of the four categories that I just talked about, you'll get a lot of value out of it too. So, given everything that you now know about the Lenovo Legion Go, how are you feeling about it? Do we think that this handheld is a purchase or a pass? Let's chat about it in the comments below, and as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.